Okay, I, I would like to talk about um, parents making sure that their children know how to read and write before entering school and while in school. Uh, in my opinion, and it's my opinion, that uh, it is not solely the educators or the school's responsibility to make sure that our kids know how to read. Parents have a role in that. Parents are our children's first uh, teacher. We are our children's first teacher. And we are the teacher that um, uh, remains and continues throughout their school uh, career. We never stop teaching our children. And it does not take a PhD to teach your child how to read. It is not uh, rocket science. As a matter of fact, we begin to teach them how to be literate from the time that they are born. When we talk to our babies, we find lots of opportunity to talk to our babies. We find uh, ways to in encourage our preschoolers. Uh, we talk to our infants. We talk to our toddlers. Uh, we even respond to our in, our, our babies' uh, cooing. That all those things are us, our parents, making sure that their 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 uh, children are vocal, that they have uh, language and listening skills. Um, we listen to music with our children. Those things, those very simple things that we do when our children are babies. And it's also my opinion that a child should know their alphabet and the sounds of the alphabet before, and you heard me say before, they enter kindergarten. Teach your children about books and the concept of books, holding them right side up, front to back, uh, lifting the pages, reading left to right, uh, making eye contact with others so that when they go to school, they will be confident. Read to your child every day. And as they grow, have them read to you. A child should know they from, from pre-K to third grade, children learn how to read. From fourth grade and beyond, they use those reading skills that they learn in third grade and below to understand and to comprehend. And to comprehend. From fourth grade beyond, they read to learn. So your, our children should see us reading we should read to them. We should have them read to us. And we should definitely teach our babies, our children, before going into kindergarten, their alphabet, the sound, and how to handle books. That is a parent's responsibility. And I'm saying that because right now I currently teach college. And when I get an 18 or 19 year old fresh out of high school, they cannot write a sentence, less known a paragraph and a college essay. That really angers me. And it angers me and then I'm almost done because they have a parent or guardian, some adult who was supposed to nurture them. Why didn't that person know that they didn't know how to read and write a sentence? And they were touched by 13 teachers. How did they fall through the cracks? And that really bothers me. It really upsets me because there are things that we can do as parents and as guardians to make sure that our, our 17, 18 year old is not in high school, a high school senior with a cap and gown on walking across a graduation stage, receiving a high school diploma, and you know that they are illiterate. And Michelle, I want to take this all the way back. And I want to take it first before, because we have midwives in this conversation and they can take this to a whole nother level, I know. 
I want to take it to the point that even in the womb, our babies are listening to us, whether we are purposefully reading to them or addressing them or not. And I purposefully addressed my children in the womb. I read to them in the womb since... <laughs> Since I carried during the age where we had headphones, I put headphones on my belly and played um, various types of music for them, um, except for um, music that was extremely active. And when they were born, I um, did not speak um, baby language to them because I don't know baby language. So I spoke to them the way that I speak now, the way that I'm speaking to you, for the most part. Every once in a while, they got a little ooh, ooh, ah, ah from me. But I, I spoke to them because they're people. They're baby people. So I would say, ooh, you see the yellow colors over there? Or look how beautiful the sky is yes. versus, no shade out. It's got your little baby. Got yes. Your yes. I did not do yes. that type of conversation. <laughs> And they definitely saw me reading. And we had reading time together, even if that wasn't a long amount of time. And it wasn't every day because as a single mother, that made my responsibilities explode and they were all over the place. So maybe it wasn't all the time, but it was definitely at least weekly or bi-weekly where we read something together. Also, I enjoyed listening to them read to me. Uh, there was something else I wanted to add to that. I wanted to go back to the womb, and I hope that one of the midwives in this conversation will speak to this. And that is that if we're purposefully reading or talking to our child in the womb, like uh, many of us often, if if our if our sister or our friend is carrying, we'll we'll put our face to that person's be belly and speak to that child. Even if we're not purposefully speaking to them, if we're angry, if we're crying, they receive those mo emotions also. So mm -hmm. if you didn't know, now you know, and you can research and find out even more reasons and the, the, um, um, the, um, effects of purposefully reading and talking to your child and how that child does receive your emotions. If you're crying a lot, if you're yelling a lot, whatever your emotional state is, yeah. that child is receiving that. Yeah, definitely. And I can also add we can try to um, trick our children into thinking that we're okay when something is going wrong, but they read our, um, yeah, they read our nonverbals. They read yeah. your facial expression and you can't see your face while you're driving a car or while you're standing at the kitchen sink or stove or walking around, but they can see your face. Yeah. Um, and one of my sons did tell me, Ma, you would say, oh, everything is okay. He said, but I look at your face and say, uh-uh, no, that's not an okay face. That's a worried face. So if she's worried, I'm worried. Mm -hmm. He said, so when you were okay laughing and seeming regular and you were okay, then I was okay and happy. But if you didn't seem that way, then I was worried too. Yeah. And I, I think I think I'm going to add this that as you when you're teaching, when you're having your child read to you or you're reading to them, no matter what the age level, talk about what you're reading because that's how comprehension is built. Yeah. Talking about what yeah. you're reading, understanding somebody else's opinion about what's being read. You know, you got to. They have to be able to connect the reading with comprehension skills and vocabulary, you know, talk about what words mean in the story and in the context of the story. And then you got to also connect what they're reading to their writing. Those two things are connected. Um, so have them write some stuff. You write some stuff for them. You know, it's, it's, it's my, my, my main point is it is a parent's responsibility. 
we can't we have to stop leaving it up to the school system that needs to be that is broken we need to start from scratch with that stop leaving it up to these schools to make sure your child knows how to read and can write Absolutely. a sentence in paragraph it's and Absolutely. what you said michelle about writing you know i'm you know for me i've always said you know to be a better writer reader you need to be a better writer and so if you allow your child to also, when they're younger, tell you a story. Yeah. Show them how to structure a story. Yeah. You know, it needs to have a beginning, needs to have a middle, and it needs to have an end. Mm -hmm. What's the point of the story? Yeah. I have a four-year-old granddaughter who is just wonderful with making up a story you know she'll she'll call she'll call me and say you know bb let me tell you my story mm -hmm. you know so then i have to listen to her tell me her story you know yeah. sometimes it's about her dial or it's about her bear but she knows how to frame a story yeah you know and there's a flip side to that when they're reading something they should be able to identify the main idea, three supporting details. When they have an opinion about something, they can have an opinion about, I don't like this food that's on, or on the dinner table. That's your main idea. Why? Give me three reasons why. They mm -hmm. need to practice giving that main idea and three supporting details. Then when they begin to write their paragraphs and their essays, they'll be able to support their thoughts, support their exactly. opinion. It starts in the home. I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of it. It starts in the home. That's not going to... I'm not going to... You, you are absolutely more than 100% correct. Aquila. Talking? There now, you go. Now... Here's I noticed like with with my grandchildren here, they don't teach them to write in full sentences. Mm. They can give one one word answers, and so we have to teach them to to think in the, with a full thought. You know what I mean? And to write a full sentence. If you're learning how to read, read a full sentence. Make sure you got a subject, a verb, in that, and teach them. To, to Johnny went home, not home. And so teachers uh, have have them to do that because it's easier to grade. You can get to your grading papers a lot quicker, but you're not teaching them to think whole thoughts. Yeah. No, not at all. You know, their thought, their thinking is fragmented. So having them to to speak in a whole sentence is a good practice for parents to, you know, incorporate. Yeah. And Aquila, I like the way that um, you have your home learning um, 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 happy. It, 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 um, that's not the word that I'm looking for, but friendly. That's the word I'm mm. looking for. It's learning friendly. You mm. have a space, uh, you have certain spaces in your home where you're going to learn something every time you look at that wall or that space. Yeah, wow. Versus, yes. that, versus that home just being um, cute or beautiful or um, yeah. styled. It, yeah, it's it's friendly. I, I put up um, maps, world maps, United States maps, and just put them up. They're big, you know, like this size and put them up. I and, did that and, when my children were younger too. And they'll go over there and they're looking. So they're learning geography. They're learning spatial awareness. They're learning that the world is bigger than what it appears to them. And they're making yeah. connections. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that parent that we could do is put put visual geography. They don't never want us yeah. knowing geography. You know what I mean? Yeah. So our kids need to know geography. They need to know what the continents are and where they are in relationship to this spot, that spot. So they can see we are not minorities. We are not in the minority. Yes, and, and parents can put up um, dry erase boards. They yeah. can, um, they can, there's a, um, a 
the chalk paint. They can paint a section of the house chalk paint. Yeah. I suggested that Make to a parent. Oh, that's so messy and that's so this. And I said, well, when they were babies, you change um, poopy diapers. Yeah. And you end up vomit. That's that's a lot less messier than that. Well, we would hey. we would take the cardboard, the boxes from the cereal boxes because they're hard, they're harder cardboard, and we would cut out the letters. And then they would they would use markers or crayons and they would color the letters and we put them up. They love it. Yeah. You know, you know the other thing is I, I get a lot of um young people who who um don't who, who does not understand what a sentence sounds like. Because yeah. standard sounds like sounds yeah. like sounds like. So therefore, if they don't know what it sounds like, then they're not able to write it because there's there's, there's not a connection there. And yeah. that's mm -hmm. because standard English is not spoken in the homes. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they don't, they speak with the the all the time. But, you know, and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with Ebonics and the way that we speak because it's yeah. our language. But teach right, right. you how to code switch. Yeah, code switch, bilingual, make them bilingual. All, outside of these uh, videos, I don't speak the same way that I speak on the videos. On the yeah. videos, I'm conscious of, of the language, the way that I speak the language. So in order to get right. that 18-year-old how to hear what language should sound like, I have to suggest to them that they watch a documentary or they watch um, um, CNN news. They need to watch not a show because they might not hear the language in, in a, a show. So they have right. to watch the news or documentary so they can retrain their ears so they can hear what standard English sounds like. They, they, they don't write the S at the end of a word they may say, uh, I just said, so they can hear what standard English sounds like. They may say sound like without the S right. on the end. So when mm -hmm. they're writing that sentence, they don't hear the S. So they are confused as to why I'm trying to get them to put that ending, the, the ED, the S on the ends of their words. It's just... It's just mind-boggling to me how they got through the class. Mm -hmm. Well, I used to have an aunt that she used to <laughs> make us get on the phone to to cut, have a conversation because she wanted to hear how we enunciated. Yes. And just to be able to, as she said, speak classic English. Yeah. You know, she said, because again, you know, you have to, we know we, we know how to switch, but can you speak where someone else would understand you clearly? Mm -hmm. So we practice on the phone. You know, I had an English professor good. that would, an English professor the professor that would that assigned us a news program that we had to watch on yeah. Sunday, and yeah. we had to respond. We had yeah. to write an essay, a responding essay to that yeah. news program. And because it was his favorite news program. Yeah. And, and these are just small things that a family can do in order to mm -hmm. make sure that their child is literate. Oh, you don't understand how I cringe and just get so angry when I have a 18 year old, 17 year old come to my class and I'm supposed to be teaching them how to develop their ideas and to support their ideas and to do research to find out other experts who believe the same way and document and cite. And I can't do that because they can't write a decent sentence. It just angers me because there are 13 teachers who touch them. They had a parent or a guardian all that their school life. Why didn't anybody know? And if you suspected that they were not literate, 
Why didn't you do anything about it? Well, yeah, it's true. it's true. Well, no, I think that's a good way to segue into the next one because that's a good question that's loaded and very difficult to answer. <laughs> 